<clears throat> well, if you've been with us, you'll know that this year uh, for Lake Grove Church is all about finding our story in God's story. And in a season like this, we're wondering where God's story and our story fits together. Uh, we're going through God's story this year, of 2020, uh, through the Bible in 365 stories. And our daily reading plan uh, aligns with our weekly sermons. And so you can find our daily reading plan on our website in our About section. You can click on the button that says 365, God's Story, Our Story. Well, today, we continue our series called Covenant, How God loves us. And uh, today we are exploring, and through this entire series, we're exploring how God loves, rescues, and forms us with His promises. So with this viral scare upon us, we need God's promises. But what if it seems God's promises has, have left us? Well, today's reading plan, I think, uh, addresses that. As a matter of fact, if you look at our reading plan, today, uh, reading plan is about all of Deuteronomy. So get comfortable. No, I'm just kidding. I will be simply sharing uh, a Deuteronomic overview, and then I'm going to focus on a segment of Deuteronomy regarding God's faithful promises. So let me give you a brief overview of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is the last book of the Torah, which is the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, uh, what we would typically call the Old Testament. And that means that those first five books of the Torah, the, the first five books are the Torah, and they are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. That's right. Now, Deuteronomy... That book is Moses' last words to God's people before he dies, as he stands on top of Mount Pisgah, looking back on the wilderness that they've come from, and then looking forward into the promised land. Deuteronomy, uh, the word Deuteronomy is a Greek word of all things, meaning second law. It's because God's law was first given in the book of Numbers, and then Moses here in the book of Deuteronomy repeats that law here a second time, reminding the Israelites of the law while at the same time retelling their story, weaving law and their story together, their story of escape from Egypt and their life in the wilderness for the past 40 years. And this is the end of their wilderness wandering as they're gazing into the promised land, anticipating the promised land. So Deuteronomy looks backward to all God has done and then forward to all that God will do, poising God's people for the promised land. Jesus himself loved Deuteronomy. It was his code for living, and he often quoted it throughout Scripture. And I love these words from Henrietta Mears about uh, Deuteronomy and Jesus. She says this, The Christian heart always quickens its beat when it comes to Deuteronomy. For this book was a favorite with our Savior. From this book, he quoted in his conflict with the adversary. Thus, this book of Deuteronomy, God's book about obedience, Moses' last charge to his people, seems to have about it the peculiar blessing and protection of Christ himself. And so with those words, let's read Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 44 through 52. And uh, when I finish reading this text, I'm going to say, this is the word of the Lord. And then if you believe it, no matter where you are, if you believe it, you can shout out with me, thanks be to God. So let's listen to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Moses came and recited all the words of this song in the hearing of the people, he and Joshua, son of Nun. When Moses had finished reciting all these words to all Israel, he said to them, take to heart all the words that I am giving and witness against you today. 
Give them as a command to your children so that they may diligently observe all the words of this law. This is no trifling matter for you, but rather your very life. Through it, you may live long in the land that you are crossing over the Jordan to possess. On that very day, the Lord addressed Moses as follows. Ascend this mountain of the Abarim, Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, across from Jericho, and view the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites for a possession. You shall die there on the mountain that you ascend, and shall be gathered to your kin, as your brother Aaron died on Mount Hor and was gathered to his kin, because both of you broke faith with me among the Israelites at the waters of Meribath Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin, by failing to maintain my holiness among the Israelites. Although you may view the land from a distance, you shall not enter it, the land that I am giving to the Israelites. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So poised for the promised land. Where is that promise? A young man walked into a photography studio with a picture of his girlfriend, and he wanted the picture duplicated. The manager noticed the inscription on the back of the picture. It said, My dearest Tom, I love you with all my heart. I love you more and more each day. I will love you forever and ever. I am yours for all eternity. Signed, Becca. And then it had a PS on the back. I want this picture back when we break up. <laughs> That's an unfaithful promise. Is that what we think about God's promises? In this season of fear, God says he's faithful, but does he take it back? Deuteronomy proclaims God's blessing, getting the Israelites poised for the promise, the promised land. But in these times of viral fear and anxiety and disease, can we trust God's promises are faithful? Does God want his picture back? Maybe it seems God's promises aren't pulling through for you. Maybe it seems God's promises are empty. Maybe it seems God's promises don't really matter. Look at Moses. He sees the promised land up from Mount Pisgah but doesn't get to enter it. He never gets to live in it. He never gets to enjoy it. He never gets to experience the promised land. Then Deuteronomy ends. The credits roll like an independent art film, leaving us hanging with more questions than answers. We think in the midst of a pandemic, where are God's promises? Did God take his picture back? I mean, like Moses, I'll never get to the promised land. A 10 year study in Germany researched how people say goodbye. And in this research, it revealed that men who kissed their wives goodbye before leaving for work lived an average of five times longer and earned 20 to 30 percent more than peers who left without a goodbye kiss. 
And researchers also reported that, and I'm quoting, not kissing one's wife goodbye before leaving in the morning increased the, increased the possibility of a car accident by 50%. <laughs> wow. I figure you should get an insurance break if you can kiss your spouse goodbye in the morning. Although, friends, we are in a time of social distancing. But the point is, how you say goodbye is a matter of life and death. That, friends, that is the entire book of Deuteronomy. It's Moses' goodbye kiss guaranteeing life by embracing God's promise of blessing for us. These words of Deuteronomy are so important that in the first three verses of our text, it says four times, kol ha devarim. See, our original text here is in Hebrew. And four times in those first three verses, it says in Hebrew, kol ha devarim which means all the words. Moses says, take to heart kol ha devarim. Take to heart all the words that I am giving. These words of Deuteronomy, all of them, are of immense importance. We are to remember kol ha devarim, all the words. Moses tells them in this loving kiss goodbye, Moses tells them to pass them on, these words on, as a legacy to their children. Because it is by these words that kol ha devarim, all the words, that God's faithful promises flourish. And if I, if I wish anything for you, I wish for you a passion for God's word, a passion for kol ha devarim, all the words, because it's by them that you know a living relationship with God through Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Kol ha devarim is the legacy Moses was passing on. It's God's word which makes us poised for the promise. But we ask, where are God's promises now? I need those promises today. Even Moses didn't get to enjoy the promised land. Will I? Yes, Moses did not enter the promised land, as our text says, because of disobedience. And we may not like the way that that sounds, but don't you see? Deuteronomy outlines a clear link between not trusting God's promises and not enjoying God's promises. It just makes sense. God has so much blessing if we simply trust what God says. Deuteronomy looks backward and forward, poising God's people for the promise, saying God has been faithful and God will be faithful. God is still faithful because God is still God. When we turn from God's word, we miss God's promises. So trust kol ha devarim. Trust all the words, all God's faithful promises, even amid viral fear and anxiety and disease. In a time like this, I've got to mention the 14th century English mystic Julian of Norwich. Julian wrote during the terrors of the Black Plague. 
And as that deadly pandemic was spreading, Julian of Norwich wrote, Just as our flesh is covered by clothing and our blood is covered by our flesh, so are we, body and soul, covered and enclosed by the goodness of God. Yet the clothing and flesh will pass away, but the goodness of God will always remain and will remain closer to us than our own flesh. Julian believed in the faithful promise of God's blessing in the midst of that pandemic so deeply that she is known for her frequently quoted words. Maybe you've heard them before too. Her most frequently quoted words are, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Now, you might be thinking, well, that sounds great for a 14th century English mystic. But all does not seem well. A pandemic? Where are God's promises for me? I need the promises now. But don't you see? We do have the promises now. That promise of kol ha devarim, that promise of all the words, has come to us. God's word is our legacy. God's word brings life. God's word reveals salvation. God's word became flesh. God's word is Jesus Christ himself. Maybe that's why Jesus quoted Deuteronomy so often. Maybe Jesus was saying, don't you get it? God's word, God's promise is me. See, our legacy is not a beautiful tradition. Our legacy is not an exciting history. Our legacy is not eloquent sermons. Our legacy is God's promise expressed fully as God's word made flesh in the person of the risen and reigning Lord Jesus Christ himself, who is alive and active and changing lives today. This is our legacy of God's promise for the world. Are you poised for the promise? In 2003, I took my uh, young family, we had two toddlers at the time, uh, to a family reunion in Texas. And it was a great time. There were probably about uh, 30 of us all together in this extended family there. Grandparents, grandchildren. It was great. And on that last full day together, we held a sort of informal family worship service. We sat around in a big circle and we sang worship songs and we shared family stories and scriptures, remembering God's faithful promises to us. And it was so meaningful to hear uncles and aunts and grandparents and grandchildren share stories. It was so meaningful for me to hear my dad, an engineer, sharing his heart, sharing his gratefulness for God's faithfulness through Christ in his life and in the lives of our extended family. Well, that next day we left. And I remember my dad's parting words. Maybe this was like Moses' Deuteronomy address to his people, but these words meant so much to me, these parting words. He said how much he loved me. (laughs) How grateful he was for Paige and for our kids. 
how thankful he was to God for our extended family knowing Jesus Christ. And I said, me too. And those words have become so important to me. That's because three weeks later, I received a phone call from a sheriff in Wisconsin telling me that my dad had been killed in a plane crash. My dad's words of goodbye were his final words to me. Kol ha devarim, all those words became a gracious gift from God. My dad's final words to me are a legacy of love and promise that I will keep forever. Words trusting in God's loving promise through Christ. And like Moses, and like my dad, I hope my parting words pass on that legacy. Maybe you are standing on top of Mount Pisgah right now in your life. Maybe you are standing on top of that mountain looking back on how God has been faithful and you're looking forward, maybe wondering if God will still be faithful to his promise. Amid viral fear and anxiety and disease, where's the promise? Friends, Jesus Christ is the promise that we have. Jesus Christ is the word that we keep. Jesus Christ is the legacy we share. Jesus Christ is our hope. Jesus Christ is our joy. Jesus Christ is our salvation. Jesus Christ is proof of God's promise. Are you poised for the promise? Kol ha devarim, all the words of God are fulfilled in the word that became flesh. Jesus Christ, the embodied promise. So, amid fear and disease and anxiety and even death, Believe it or not, God is bigger than this pandemic. Believe it or not, God is bigger than our fears. Believe it or not, God is bigger than even death. Friends, God has been faithful and God will be faithful. God is still faithful because God is still God. And God faithfully fulfills his promise in Christ because Jesus Christ is the promise who even conquers death. And so, the question remains, are you poised for the promise? Amen.